You're now live. We are now live and I'll take down the message. Okay. So we are, this is Senate Finance. This is February 16th. And last week, as we were working our way through the waiting bill, which now has a very long number as a committee bill, um, we got to the section on the waiting oversight committee, waiting tax rate oversight committee. And it switched several, and we also had some um, ongoing evaluations in there. And I wanted to give the affected parties a chance to speak up and tell us. Uh, so we have the auditor, um, and I know the tax commissioner will be here with us. I see his name. Um, just to give us any feedback they have on, we've, we've changed some of this dynamic. We've switched some responsibilities around, at least the proposal does. And I wanted to give them a chance to respond. So Auditor Hoffer, welcome. Thank nice you. building Good behind afternoon. you. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I had not looked at this bill. I wasn't aware this was coming, but I've had a little bit of time and uh, I can offer a few comments. And as I'm sure Senator Brock will appreciate, you know, a Gagas audit in the first instance requires criteria. Uh, if you're going to do a performance audit, you have to measure performance against something that's fairly concrete. It's not like miles of pavement for AOT, uh, but it's got to be something you can get your hands around. There's a great deal of uh, subjectivity and ambiguity in this language, and that's not surprising, given the subject matter. So that presents a bit of a problem for us. Uh, and furthermore, uh, looking down the road for when you would like this done, I think, unless I misread it, that the complete transition will not be complete until 28. So if that's true, then you're only going to get one year in that new regime before you ask for uh, a review by us or someone else. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, second, it's always helpful to the extent it's possible to establish a baseline. And in this case, uh, you know, if you don't have clear objectives yet and the committee hasn't been created, arguably they could do this uh, at your request. Uh, the legislature with aid from all the parties that you know are knowledgeable, I would encourage you to think about uh, establishing those objectives to the extent you can now and measure them as best you can now so that you'll have a baseline so that whomever does this down the road, you can show what the progress was. Otherwise you miss that opportunity, which I think is really valuable. Um, so those, those are the main uh, takeaways for me. Uh, this would be a tough job for my office uh, without, at least right now, without knowing more about the objectives. And there many of them are really quite subjective. Uh, you know, you use terms like sufficiency, Okay, well, that's clearly, uh, in the eyes of the beholder, uh, equitable resources. You know, I'm not sure how to define those things. We could give it a shot, but uh, it, it seems like the committee that you're creating, which is probably a very good thing, uh, will be comprised, I believe, hopefully, uh, with people who know a lot more about this stuff than we do. That doesn't mean we can't learn. That's what we do. There's always a learning curve for audits. Um, but they might be better able to do this. And if, again, even whether they had objective uh, metrics now to measure against later or not, uh, if they did some work on your behalf, we could do what is arguably a better role for us, which is you know, measure the accuracy and completeness of their work. That's one of the things that, that we're pretty good at. Having said that, I have no principled objection, except that without better criteria, it would be very tough. Okay. I mean, I'm going to be gone in 2029 anyway, so it's my you know, successor, so not up to me. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, committee, Senator Brock. I, I agree uh, with, with Auditor Hoffer, and uh, what we did uh, in the task force in adding this requirement is it became very clear that we had a whole bunch of things that this waiting study was supposed to achieve, part of it being based upon the work that UVM did uh, to assess how we measure student performance and student outcomes. Uh, and that the items that are contained in the waiting study are designed to improve those things. 
The task force certainly did not have time though to go into creating the actual criteria uh, and the detail level necessary to do the measurement. The purpose of this provision was to one, recognize that if we're going to make these kinds of major changes, they ought to actually achieve something that's worthwhile, one, and two, we should have a mechanism to determine whether it did or did not. The third thing was who's going to make that determination? And frankly, we didn't trust anybody but the auditor's office to be able to do that objectively and independently. So those were the things that we sought to achieve in the overall language from the results of the waiting study. Now uh, comes the work, though, of defining it better so that, as the auditor has described, that the measurement can, in fact, be taking place. I think also that uh, we, we ought to be thinking about interim measures of one kind or another. Uh, and this committee that's being formed is, is probably, yes, the right entity to do it. But I don't think we can do this kind of major change and then wait till 2031 or 32 to determine whether or not it made sense. So we, we need to get a middle ground that provides some uh, objective analysis of whether this is working well beforehand, as well as provide a mechanism to do performance auditing to test whether it works. And that may have to be done in phases rather than in one huge report at the end. Okay. So we may need to do, and the, yeah, and, and some of these criteria might, they really are more in the realm of the Department of Education to, or working with the superintendents and principals, but they're education based, but they do need to be measurable. And we've also talked about standardized tests may not be the best measure either. Um, especially for some of the things like the poverty weight. So uh, something to think about. Any other questions for the auditor? So we need to have measurable criteria. All right, Senator Hardy. Thank you. Um, so what you're suggesting is this, this other entity that is created in the bill, the the Education Tax Advisory or Education Fund Advisory Committee, um, that's really meant to be really financially focused, not educational outcomes focused um, as much. So I, I think I do think that the Agency of Education would uh, be more of an appropriate body to come up with some of the measurements that, rather than this new committee. But um, I'm wondering if we can just create sort of a mechanism in the bill for more defining that, because I'm not sure that we have the time <laughs> to go through and, and co com complete all the mechanisms. And I agree with Senator Brock that we wouldn't want to wait until you know 2032 to, to do anything with this. So. Um, that's what I would hope that we would do is have something in the bill. So if you have a suggestion, um, Doug or Mr. Hoffer, that would be helpful. Uh, Doug is fine, thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, that's, that's all sensible. It's possible if you just flagged this section and proceed as you will in committee and with the full Senate and allow the thing to go over if that's what happens. You could use some of this time if, if the agency is willing to work with uh, other experts, UVM folks and others to try to get some of this done uh, before the end of the session. If you, if you can do yeah. at least some of that, that would help us get a better sense of whether what they've done will allow us to do what you're asking us to do or whether it would need further tweaking. Uh, but. I'm open to suggestion. I just wanted to let you guys know that, and as Senator Brock knows and agrees, it, at present, it's a little soft. That's all. Yeah. And by the way, one, one other thing I've learned from us doing, I think, three jobs uh, in the education space during my tenure, anything that is related to the schools directly, not the agency itself, is very, very difficult uh, to collect good information in a timely manner. 
Uh, it's a big unwieldy system and the agency will be the first to tell you when you ask them for information that you think is commonplace they said that's not our job you have to go to the schools once you do that uh, this timing becomes an issue but also which schools how do you decide on a sample or in your case do you really want to know statewide in which case it's a very big job so just to keep that in mind going forward yes i think we found that before Four in that the state that the schools we don't have a do we have a common accounting system because we didn't and we couldn't tell what the average cost of anything was um, when we were trying to evaluate money things and this is educational progress and that's going to be more difficult so. So to talk a little bit about ancient history, I remember during the time that I served as state auditor, which is what, 15 plus years ago, uh, I was happy to learn that there was a common chart of accounts that was used throughout the education system. The only problem was they used it differently. And what was in one account was not necessarily the same thing that was in another. I hope it's improved over since then. I, I don't think we've gotten a common calendar yet, Senator Hardy. They're, they're, they're sort of in the process of implementing a common chart of accounts. It's, it's been uh, rather bumpy, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so you all have probably heard from your school districts about how much they hate it, um, but it, it's sort of still in the works. Um, but AOE does collect a lot of data, a lot of data from you know yes. school districts about perform student performance and and financial stuff so i i do think that there is data available on a school district and that the the original pupil waiting study used data from that the aoe had collected so i, I think it exists it's just a matter of defining it so we really okay. should be talking to them yeah i i already got a note for next week and if i say it out loud faith will make sure we do to get somebody from aoe in uh, to help us at least have something in here. This does have to go through the other body. Um, but if it's going to go this year, it's got to come out of here. Um, so if we have a placeholder of some kind in there, that will allow them to maybe flesh it out a little more, provided they agree with what we've done on everything else, which... It's not overly likely, but, um, you know, we we need to flag that as something that needs attention, even if we do kick it off onto a committee or onto the Department of Ed to bring us back a proposal, us or the Ed, probably the Ed Committee um, next year um, and see where that see where that goes maybe they can use what is it in this bill we told them to hire three or four more people uh, maybe that's what they can use them for okay any other questions thank you doug for taking time to be with us today you're very welcome thank you uh, let me know how i can help okay well we will be back in touch okay all right, Catherine, I see, you. there you are. Okay, so just looking at the Ed Fund Advisory Committee and some of the tasks we've set, I know Joint Fiscal works to get, you know, with the tax department to get that letter out. Do you see red flags, issues? I don't. I think a lot of this is sort of is is some of this is basically current law. Uh, the collaboration with the agency of education is trying to formalize. I think what's been informal. I um, I have two, I guess, areas of concern. One is just talking about the letters. I just noticed it. I think it's due January. The recommendation is January fifteenth. And which is later than December one. So for schools that are putting together their budgets, that might be tight timing. That's just a yeah. 
that's not a JFO thing. It's more, it's the committee that's setting it, but it's just something for you all to think a little bit about. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure why the January 15th date was chosen, um, but school boards are often closing their budgets around that time. So yeah, you might want all kinds of posting, um, they have to post the budget X number of weeks before an election and it has to be finalized. OK, right. So that's just one Ruth, thing I'm to gonna let Catherine finish and then we'll take have questions. Uh, and then the other um, the other piece that I am um, pondering is this collaboration with the agents of education and and the recalibrating the weights. It's. Um, I don't know how specific it should be, but it, it's a, it's pretty vague in terms of how often they should be recalibrated, and if there's uh, if there's a, a need to use um, certain to use the model that was used before. So um, that's just a a point of further discussion and consideration as as you all work through this. I. Um, I'm just not, I guess I'm not quite sure exactly what this will be. And maybe we go to the committee and the committee agrees to it and we come up with a recommendation. Uh, but I don't think doing the weights, I think doing the weights every year is probably a bigger lift. Recal recalibrating is, is not what I think was anticipated. Um, so it's sort of figuring out what that process should be. Okay. We don't have a problem working with the Agency of Education and we do that now as well. So that part is, should be fine. Okay, so ba basically, all right, Senator Hardy, I know you had your hand up. Can you share what the thought was on January 15th? Well, um, I think, um, Catherine, the, the December 1st letter is still December 1st. If you okay. look in section 16, that's the December 1st letter. That, okay. So that doesn't change. The other stuff is just reporting to the, the legislature. Um, and my I think there's language in here that is, and I, I have to look, um, but there's language in here about how the weights would be set a year in advance. So um, so that's helpful. Can, can I just talk about the January 15th yeah. date just for a second? Just so on section 15, um, just, no, that's not it. Yes, the up, uh, no, is it 15? Where is the, where it talks about the categorical aid in the, uh, oh, it's the top, no, it's page, it's section 14 in C. And just, I, 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 I'm, I'm, maybe I should go back and read it. I'm just not quite clear because it has the weights and categorical aid as necessary. So I just want to make sure school boards have the information. You're right, the December, I'm, the December one letter is still there. I don't know if this would change anything for the school board's budgets. And I would just want to think about that. I, I just noticed that when I got on here, okay. so I haven't, um, I just haven't thought about that. I wanted to. Should yeah, and there was clear. Well, there was the intent was, and maybe it didn't make it into this draft because I was trying to remember a lot of details when I worked with Jim on this draft, but the intent was that we would set the weights, the weights would, if the legislature was going to mess with the weights or change the weights, it would be done a year in advance. So it wouldn't be during the session, we would make a change to the weights or the categorical aid amounts and then do it yeah. for the next school year. It would be in advance. And so if that needs to be clarified, I, I'm, C Catherine, I think any of this language that needs to be clarified, we can certainly do that with the dates, but it wasn't the intention that we would wait till January 15th to get them all this information. Yeah, I didn't think it was. So uh, you're right. So we, I, I just, we need to go back and just make sure that what you're talking about, the intention, doing it a year ahead of time is a good idea if you're ch making changes to the weights. And then just on the complete recalibration of the recalibration of the weights, which I think is not an annual um, event. I, um, this is very broad. So I guess I, one, one thing I would like to think about a little bit is how much more direction do you want to provide or not provide on how often that would happen? And if there's anything specific that you would use uh, for it. Um, yeah, Professor Colby suggested that the weights need to be and she made a distinction between recalculation and recalibration. And it was, it's subtle, but uh, actually a big difference. And 
that the recalibration I think has to ta happen every five, at least every five years and recalculation could happen more frequently if something major changes and that the model that you would share with AOE would be able to do the recalculation. The recalibration may take a little bit more um, effort and we certainly could define that more, but m my recollection is that she thought at least every five years and one of the, they were just recalculated in the fall, we the, the task force asked her to recalculate them, but they haven't been recalibrated since the study was done. So, and Senator Brock, I don't know if you remember this whole conversation about recalculation versus recalibration, but it was it was subtle but important. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking of something. January fifteenth. Unless we're giving this committee the power to calibrate or calculate whichever it is rates um any change is going to have to be legislative and that means if we don't get it well i suppose january 15th of the first year we may have time to get a bill drafted um provided it's not as controversial as this one um, but I think we need to look, we've got school boards and budgets and their timing, but if we're talking about something that's going to need legislation, we're going to have to have it uh, lined up with our bill drafting um, and recommendations would have to come to us. Well, I mean, if it's the second year of a biennium, they'd have to come to us easily in November. So somebody could get a bill drafted for consideration. So that might be something to think through um, while we're working on this. Uh, Sandra Hardy. Yeah, I think it would be helpful if Catherine, you could just look through all those dates and sort of map them out with your staff and with the AOE staff and see if it all makes sense in terms of and taking into consideration potential legislation and school district budgeting and all that stuff. Um, the intention was not to create havoc. It was to try to actually decrease the havoc. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yes, I can do that. And I will look for that one year. That would be helpful. I uh, will look for the language on the one year ahead of time as well. And I, speaking to the recalculation and recalibration on section 17, I, I, I'm just, the recalibration is a bigger deal. It's a, it's a more, it's really, I think, running through what Professor Colby did on her model. And so that's the part that I would, I would welcome, um, further discussion and uh, on that, because I think that is a bigger, that's substantially more work, I think, than a recalculation. And so some of that we just need to, um, I, and I, it's going to be a question for you all, how much do you want to, uh, and it may be that we even come back with recommendations to the committee and mm -hmm. they, rec they we, we set up a time, but it's helpful to know if you're going to be doing this every four years. And I, I had heard five years also. So that's why I was throwing that out there. So I'd like to just ponder that a little bit more yeah. and think about options for it. And we'd have, if, if it is going to be the same kind of process we went through now, I'm assuming that we aren't going to have the expertise. So we will have to have a budget uh, to, like the year before to hire the expertise we need to do the job correctly. Uh, because there's nothing we're going to do that's going to monkey with school funding that's going to be non-controversial. Uh, just doesn't work that way. So, okay, so we've got to do some thinking on the timeline. I will, we will pull together a timeline on, on just thinking through all of that as Senator Hardy requested and, and lay out what 
we'll see if we if uh, what issues arise or where we so you all can yeah. also see it more clearly. Because this having this thought out beforehand will increase the probability that it gets done <laughs> in something less than 25 or 30 years. Um, so, and once we get a, a, a smooth system, hopefully it could just be one of those things that goes, you know, gets adjusted and goes into the miscellaneous tax bill. But um, it's going to take us a while to get there. Okay, other questions for Catherine. Catherine, do you have other questions for us? No, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. All right, Commissioner Bolio is with us. And Commissioner, again, this makes changes, uh, gives the, what are we calling the committee? Ed Fund Advisory Committee. They're gonna be putting out that December 1st letter. Uh, just your thoughts. Um, are you gonna miss doing that letter if we take it away from you? <laughs> that's a, that's a loaded question, Madam Chair. Uh, Craig Bolio, Tax Commissioner. Uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity to weigh in on this. Um, I had prepared just a few high level remarks as well, but it really, I think the, the earnest discussion that you folks will have is this afternoon with Secretary French. Um, so if it's all right with you, Madam Chair, I might just offer a couple of what I'm calling observations at this point, yeah. um, and then also speak specifically about the uh, Education Fund Advisory Committee. So, uh, you know, a couple of things that, I, that, that I've observed, and forgive me, because I suspect many of the committee members have already been thinking about uh, these kind of dynamics as well with this whole discussion. But, you know, one of the things that we've been thinking about is that um, with, with the reweighting efforts, it's, it's likely to be expected that overall spending in the system will go up, um, right, in the tax capacity model, because you'll have districts who gain capacity, and, and our hope is that they would use it. Uh, to support their students, but you'll also have districts that lose capacity that won't be able to, uh, likely won't be able to cut costs commensurate to, to even that out. So that's one observation and, and sort of another one that we haven't quantified yet, um, but is interesting is that uh, there seem, there, there's a correlation with the towns that are going to lose capacity. Um, a lot of that because of the difference in poverty weights uh, also happen to be districts with high property values. And so our expectation is also that property, the, the cost for property tax credits will likely go up. Um, again, we haven't quantified that yet, but um, just sort of an interesting observation that my analysts had noted um, and, and seems to track. And certainly for those folks who are under the 47,000 of household income, where uh, their income rate is, is statutorily set, uh, would definitely uh, see a, a property tax credit cost go up for that. Um, so, you know, because of those two things, one of the things that we've definitely flagged for uh, further consideration is uh, the suspension of the excess spending threshold. You know, I know previously the discussions had been that we would want to suspend it to ensure that it's not underweighted towns who are getting hit by it. Um, I'm guessing the current thinking now is that you don't want to have towns that have big swings and equalized peoples due to the reweighting become subject to the, the cap to the excess spending threshold just because of the reweighting. Um, so I don't have a solution for that problem. It's a difficult problem to solve, um, but just noting that, um, especially with the other cost pressures that we might see. Um, specifically on the Education Fund Advisory Committee, I, I struggle a little bit to see the value that we'd get from moving the December 1 letter to it. Um, you know, the, the, work is, the work is really already collaborative between JFO, Agency of Education, and my department. Um, and the, the bill doesn't call for a change in how the calculation is made, right? So the statute is very prescriptive. And really, from my team's perspective, it's a really fairly technical math exercise. Um, and it, my read of the bill was not that any of the public members of the committee would be taking on any of the actual work for that calculation. So to me, it feels like the calculation process would be the same, but then would have to go through this committee. So I didn't quite see what the value is uh, for, for moving the December 1 letter to that, uh, to that committee. 
I'd also note, I, I suspect maybe there's larger discussions again that you might have with Secretary French and, and just heard with, uh, with Catherine as well about, um, you know, recommendations for reweighting. Um, and so I, I, I'm not an expert to weigh in on that area. Um, and, and maybe there's some value to be uh, derived there, but I didn't, I didn't immediately see value for the December one letter. I'm also not uh, dying on that hill at this point, um, but th those are my uh, preliminary thoughts. Committee, any questions for Commissioner Bolio? Okay, so yeah, I, I Since your department, education, and JFO are doing this letter now, nothing in this bill changes what goes into that letter or the calculation. So your question is, why are we moving it to a committee which I, does it, it say how often they meet Senator Hardy? Or I think I I'm charged with, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, that's no, okay. Yeah, you're charged with calling it. I don't think it says specifically how often it meets. Okay. Okay. But I'm assuming that that would take a budget of some form. Uh, so why, yeah, why, why, I guess the it begs the question, why are we calling a committee in to session if this is meant to be so cut and dried that it's not partisan, no one can play with it, it just is. Um, so I think that's, that's on our questions from the commissioner. All right, any other questions for Commissioner Bolio? I'm not hearing any. Anything else you want us to think about? Uh, not on this topic, no. Okay, not on this topic, all right. <laughs> okay, well, we have got some time here. So I see Jim Demarais name is up. I don't know if he is available to pop up, but we might, there he is. We might take a look at these sections of the bill and just kind of walk through what it says. Um, can, can you do that for us, put it up? Or oh, I have it, yeah, I can. I think I meant though, because I didn't, I wasn't expecting. No, you up. weren't so on, on there and this is, this is just off the cuff. That's fine. Let me just uh, give me but a minute. This committee got to... a long break and I'm not, predisposed to give them another long one. We have a lot of work to get to. Okay, give me one second and I'll, I can get this up for you. Okay. If I can show the screen, which I can, good. Nine, one. Okay, making progress. Okay, we're on the wrong screen, now we're on the right screen. No, we had a screen and now we've got your file auto save screen. There nice it goes. Honor. Okay. We've hold got on. something. All right. Good. Yeah. Hold on. Let me get the centered the systems are giving me trouble today. There we go. Okay. All right. So let me well, You got to make it smaller again. This one, we're only getting half a sentence. Yep. How is that? Mm, hasn't changed. Hasn't changed? 
No, it got it was a good size and then it got big again. That's too big for you. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's too big. How is that? It's the same. We yeah. only see as far as not even the full word finance. Okay, so something's happening. I'm not sure what because it's on my screen just fine. Let me stop the share for a minute and redo it. Just see if that fixes it. Because it got in, it was fine for a, but a second, and then it's flipped back to big. Education. Yeah, here it is again. Um. Success. Oh, success. Oh. Ah, but it fell I thought, down. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, uh, okay, hold on. Here, here we go. Show that. Success. Uh, didn't come up yet. There it is. Yes, I can read it. So I, yeah, assuming most of the committee can read it. All right. Okay. So, uh, so for the record, uh, Jim Damore, that's console. We are looking at your draft two point one two of your committee committee bill on people waiting. Um, I think you you asked me to take a look at the sections on the new committee. Yes. Um, so let me find that. You just have to scroll it down. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right. So this language actually came over from, um, boy, um, came over from, I think Abby Shepard worked on this maybe with, maybe with you. I'm not sure. Um, so this language got dropped in here. Um, it's a change to the tax uh, title, title 32. So it's adding a section of law. Uh, so this is statutory law, not session law. So this is meant to be permanent. And uh, so it reads that there's a created the Education Fund Advisory Com Committee to monitor Vermont's education financing system, conduct analysis, recalculate and re recalibrate the people weights and, and calculate aid amounts as necessary and make annual recommendations uh, reporting its findings to the General Assembly. Um, and then membership are um, the commissioner, commissioner of Taxes, the Secretary of Education, and five members uh, of the public. So two with um, expertise in ed financing, uh, appointed by the speaker, uh, two with the same expertise appointed by the committee and committees and one by the governor. So those five people would will need to be compens compensated for their time. And there's no uh, set number of meetings here uh, in this section. So unclear what the appropriation would be exactly. Um, then C is powers and duties. So annually on uh, before January 15th, the committee shall make recommendations to the General Assembly regarding the, again, same same words, recal recalculation and recalibration of the people weights and categorical aid amounts as necessary, um, property, property dollar equivalent yield, income dollar equivalent yield, the non-homestead property tax rate, and the amount of, of the stabilization reserve. Assistance is uh, from various folks. So we've got Department of Taxes, Agency of Education, GFO, that's Council, and Office of Ledge Operations. Uh, the Commissioner of Taxes to call the first meeting. Um, and uh, the committee will select a chair at that meeting. Uh, majority will be a quorum. Compensation is uh, pursuant to um, a, Oh, uh, yeah, 10, 10 on this tile. So I think this is 50, 50 bucks a day per DM plus reimbursement. Um, and that's it for that section. And then you would, you're you talking about this section, section 15, which is um, the, under the previous section, um, the first report of this committee will be on before German 15th of next year, uh, coming to you among other committees. Uh, and in that report, it shall recommend the upcoming fiscal year yield, now homestead, education property tax rate, and the amount of the stabilization reserve. 
uh, as if it was if it was maintained at five percent. And then you're talking about section sixteen, which is a recommendation. Um, uh, so it cha changes the I guess the process is a bit for the December first letter. So right now it says annually, not later than December one. The Ed Fund Advisory Committee, um, after consultation with GFO, so calculate and recommend the property dollar equivalent yield, et cetera. Um, and uh, shall assume uh, that annually on before December 1, the Ed Fund Advisory, oh, sorry, they assume to relate to the next subsection. So um, that's the only change in A. And then C is changed into say, um, early on before December 1, the Education Fund Advisory Committee, again with the assistance of JFO, should prepare and publish the Ed Fund Outlook. Um, and the rest of this language is the same as it was in statute before. Um, and that was, those are the three sections I believe you were talking about. Yeah. And I guess what in this section isn't being done now. What are we adding, well, the if anything? Well, the com committee's new, obviously. So that's yeah. New but thing. I mean, what we're, we're we're forming a committee, but I, I'm trying. I'm struggling with, and I, I guess it's for Senator Hardy or uh, Senator Brock. We we're we're setting up and we're paying a committee, which means this will go automatically to a probes. Um, what value added are we getting in exchange for setting up and paying this committee? What what's what's the problem with the present system that we're trying to address? Are you I mean, asking? I can, are you asking me? Well, either one of you, I mean, this was a, um, I'm just trying to figure out, I, I understand we may need a group or somebody to watch the weights and let us know if the weights are getting out of balance. But this is taking, this is taking a lot of responsibility that's presently being done by the tax, the education and joint fiscal. And we're putting up a committee to meet annually to do what I think is essentially the same thing. And I'm just wondering what was the thought behind that? I think there are a couple things. One is that um, a lot of the work of over sort of ongoing oversight of the school finance system, which should be done in collaboration with these three, isn't well organized and doesn't happen uh, as frequently as it should. And so this would create a mechanism for um, the oversight, the recalculation of, of weights and categorical aid grants. So not just um, the weights, but also other uh, other mechanisms of funding in our system. And that there was a sense that there was, wasn't sort of ongoing expertise that was providing this sort of focused oversight. Um, and that was one of the reasons that the that the weights went so long without being looked at and that AOE does not have the capacity um, to uh, do that. Th there was a statutory requirement that the, that the Agency of Education um, recommend changes in the weights. Um, and you'll see in this bill that that statutory requirement is removed and they were never able to do it. They didn't have the capacity or the the, the data or expertise to do it. And that's why we ended up hiring a consultant. So this was- right really to have the built-in capacity and expertise that would that would be ongoing. And part of the reason that the December 1 letter was moved to this um, in this draft is, is to have it all sort of centralized in one place where AOE, joint fiscal, and the tax department are all working together more formally, because right now it's fairly informal except for the, the December 1 letter. Okay, but 
we have what, at least five members of the public? There was a sense that having sort of outside expertise from the education community and, and potentially from um, the, uh, you know, education finance expertise um, would be helpful. And this, this originally was a tax commission proposal. That's where it, this came from, the tax commission and um, the, the task force, you know, looked at the tax commission's um, re, uh, proposals and, and thought that this made sense given the fact that there was-, was well, Okay, so I, can I assume that was Deb Brighton's section of the tax proposal? I believe so, but it was also, I believe, part of previous tax commission proposals um, as well. Okay, we'll take a look at that. I, I just want to make sure. So what we're hoping to do is get expertise by paying them $100 a day. Um, because we don't have it in house. All right. Committee, any other questions about this section? Comments? Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Yes, Senator McDonald. I, I apologize. I, I was listening and I don't know the role that the December 1st letter plays along with the other um, discussions, but I would caution us to keep the December 1 letter to say what the tax rate would be under the existing law and not, um, and the purpose of that letter is to know what it would be if we don't change the law. The December 1 letter was put in there to keep administrations from using um, ed money that might be in excess or whatever to craft a budget um, before we ever showed up in the legislature. So uh, I'm not, I wouldn't mix that in with a study committee that operated during the months of the year before the legislature showed up. So thank you. Okay. So what was the problem? Perhaps Senator McDonald, you could refresh our memory. What was the problem that was happening before that caused us to put in that December 1st? Act 60 established the um, statewide property ta tax rate at $1.10, I believe. Yeah. And at $1.10, um, the school, the administration, the secretary of uh, education and others could, they could, they monitored the school boards and what the, the raises were being, the increases were being made. And they had a pretty good idea of how much a dollar 10 would provide. And for the first two years with, uh, uh, I think it was Governor Dean, um, Governor yeah. Dean's people recognized that that dollar 10 was going to raise much more money than the school districts were going to spend. And the, the budget, when we showed up, um, cut the uh, the appropriation from the that was that went to the ed fund to pay for state aid it just cut it to the bone and it stayed a dollar 10 and in the first two years we were um, using statewide property tax monies to fund the general fund budget which was contrary to the promises made by uh, those of us that voted for act 60 to begin with and when um, Governor Douglas was elected, he pursued the same practice. And we showed up and the appropriation was, um, it was supposed to go to the Ed Fund was diminished because it was extra. And with under your leadership in finance, we crafted that letter which said, uh, based on what the schools appear to be about to spend, it doesn't take a dollar ten to fund the schools, and and we reduced that dollar ten. Um, I don't know what it was in the first year or so, maybe to a dollar seven, and eventually it got into the ninety cents 
and high, less. high 80 cents. Yeah. And, and the general fund transfer continued to be, um, be applied. And the, the ratio between the amount of money to pay for the schools raised from local um, taxes, property and income, and the amount raised from the general fund remained fairly stable. But in the first several years of Act 60, um, the, that, that was the problem that was being solved, that the Ed Fund was um, shorted the general fund transfer and the property tax was picking it up. And f after that, um, the letter really only required a sentence or two. Um, this is what the tax rate would be unless you change the law. And that prevented governors from crafting a budget that um, assumed that, that used up all that money. Yep. So I'm repeating okay. myself and I will stop. Thank you. Okay, so that um, this was a keeping everybody honest and only setting the tax rate at the level necessary to raise the anticipated amount of revenue. This is after school, See the uh, finance officers, uh, superintendents, let the Department of Ed know what they were going to be proposing, right, in their budgets. Yep, they, they there was a they they scouted the budgets and they had a pretty good estimate, and I believe that for most of the years following that change, the um we were able to lower the tax rate and keep the the share of state funding and um, local taxpayers funding um, constant. And um, in the paragraphs began to be two or three or four paragraphs where governors began to say what we ought to do, but it, it, um, we, we were not preempted when we arrived to be sworn in in January. And that okay. was very helpful. The money hadn't already been spent somewhere else at least in proposal. All right. Well said. Um, okay, committee thoughts on this. Madam Chair. Yes, Senator Bray. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to check in a, a couple questions. One was, I thought I heard you say that we were hiring an expertise at $100 a day, and I didn't, um, we only see a little bit of the text here. So I don't know if that, that is elsewhere or if I missed. No. Says uh, they would be given a per diem, and I think our standard per diem is well for the courts. It's fifty bucks. I think we're somewhere under two, around a hundred. Yeah, I, I, there is a standard per diem which is very low. Right, for especially anyone. now it's still fifty. Oh. The courts, I well, when I was on jury duty. Two years ago, it was fifty dollars a day, and if you got a parking ticket, that was your lookout. <laughs> well, I think we might still be at the same level. I so, think we are. Right, and, and so to the extent that we can hire expertise for that for a per diem, I don't know how how that would work out. Like who will get? But um, yeah, so I'll leave that one alone. The, the other one I just wondered about was when. Um, when we create uh, another uh, working group or whatever we call it, a committee, I always wonder to what degree are the people who are being signed up for the committee agree that this will be a useful construct for them in which to do work, as opposed to us thinking it would be a good way to do something, but the people who are being recruited don't necessarily find it a particularly useful way of getting something done. So uh, I, I don't know how to assess that other than to right. hear from the operating areas to say, yeah, this would be helpful to us. Sometimes they'll say, yes, this would be good because you'll, you'll organize uh, our coming together and the rules of the road will be straight for all of us, et cetera. Other times it's a, a kind of a make work situation and it's not all that helpful. So I don't know how to yes. distinguish here, but I wanted to raise the question. And I, I think I think we would all agree it especially you know going through this year when we've lost our in-house expert on uh, 
the property tax, that it would be good to have some expertise, not, you know, the question is, and but I, to me, there's learning our taxing system also doesn't happen overnight. And so continuity would also be an issue. Um, and I guess the question is, for me, is the highest and best use of the expertise having them do what is designed to be the very straightforward, get out your calculator and add up the numbers and divide? Um, or would it be better to use that expertise um, on a less regular basis, but to assess the weighting structure, which is where we started out. So thoughts there. No thoughts. <laughs> um, okay, we're taking that down. Um, well, we can go on and just flag that. We are set to have a break. So why don't we, um, let's see. Have we got a half hour break, Faith? I think we do. I lost my agenda again. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, you've got a 15 minute break and then we're going to come back. And that one we're going to, we're going back to um, the retirement income tax exemptions in the feminine hygiene products bill. So I will.